I'm Gloria Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Today we are visiting with our awesome Dr. Liss and we have so much great information to share with you. There's a new drug for Alzheimer's and we're excited about that. Dr. I am excited about we that. We should be excited <laughs> because you've been working so hard and of course, I always like to brag, you are known worldwide you know what, Gloria? For we that memory known, number. We are. But we are we are known worldwide. Columbus, Georgia is known worldwide because the, the giant steps that we have helped create in the world didn't come from just from us. Mm -hmm. It came from people like you, it mm -hmm. came from the city council, the mayor's office, it came from the whole community. We are well known all throughout the world because it takes a village. It really does. But what is the memory number? And because we promote this, uh, you're mo promoting it, uh, Cole, on social media. We are promoting it everywhere we go in community events. What is the memory number? Well, thank you for asking. It's the nicest thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. uh, so my wife and I and our family came to Columbus in 1995. Mm -hmm. And Columbus has been so good to us that we're constantly looking for ways to give back to the community, as you are in so many ways. Right. And uh, one of the ways that I realized that I could give back is to improve the brain health of our community. So the memory number is the first and only vital sign ever created for the brain. Uh, I know, and I have to stop you there because I was in Florida in a department store and the lady was sharing that her mom was newly diagnosed and I had to brag on you <laughs> and told you. her to Google you because you <laughs> found it, that memory number. No, that's important. She never heard of that. Yeah. But that's very important because we can gauge ourselves and our family members that way. Yes, and yeah. most importantly, so this memory number is always going to be free. Um, they can stop at our office, no appointment no cost, no doctor. This is something for a person to check their cognitive health, their thinking health, mm -hmm. and then they'll get a reminder, either email or postcard, whatever they want each year, to say, come and get it again. And that way, they know how they're thinking in 2023, right. and when it's 2030 and they miss a turn or forget a birthday, right. they can check it again. If the number's about the same, they know it was just a bad day and nothing worse than that. Okay. And if people do start seeing that there's a, that it's trailing off, they can go try and get help either through their primary care doctor or through us. Mm -hmm. Or if they come in and their score is not as good as it should be, they should go look to see why it's not why it's not the case. Because I have to tell you, most people that have a impaired number is not from something devastating like Alzheimer's disease. Okay. It's from everyday turmoil like depression and anxiety and yes. poor sleep and medication side effects. Things that are completely correctable, but people are living with, with just not being at the top of their game and it's not necessary. Right. Or people are fearful. Very because fearful. we've been at community events and you gave the little memory test and yeah. some people were like, oh, and then I had someone call me and say, well, my number was 22, yeah. whatever that was. That's they a perfect ex score. They, they were excited about, about yeah, that yeah, and yeah. they were concerned about yeah. it because they had a family member that had had Alzheimer's. Yeah. But how did we get all of this brilliance here in Columbus? I love for you to tell that story because you have a sideway connection to Morehouse and, and all of that in terms of us keeping you and having you here in Columbus. Well, you are sweet, and to, and to call it brilliance is over the top because I'm very ordinary. I work really hard, and I, and I try very is hard. Nothing ordinary uh, about but, you. But, no. but I do appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And as, as I mentioned that it takes a village, you know, I, there definitely needs to be a shout out to, to Morehouse School of Medicine as well. Mm -hmm. uh, these are uh, fellow leaders. Uh, they have, have brought me into their fold. Uh, for a number of years, I sat on their advisory board. Really? We have, yes, we, we have... Uh, we have uh, collaborated with research ideas and research topics. Mm -hmm. uh, I have helped them. They have helped us. Um, again, uh, to me, it just takes a team. It takes a village. It takes a community mm -hmm. to do, achieve great things. And together, we're doing that. And, and right. uh, it just, you know, Columbus has felt like home because Columbus has been so darn kind to my family that, that this is the place that, that I love to live really and But you really were about. not intending because you're from the West Coast. It was never your intention to really be here. It just kind of happened. <laughs> it did just kind of happen. <laughs> That's a secret. You're not right. supposed to tell that. No, really. Yeah. But we yeah. needed you yeah. because this is the mission you were supposed to be on. Yeah, So you true. came for the interview and it was kind of just like going through the motions. Yeah. And yeah. Well, so the, the, real, the real truth is I did come. I went through the motions, mm -hmm. but I met this incredible doctor named Dr. Howard Willis. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and Howard and I have now been friends for these 30 years. Right. But I came to Columbus with kind of the preconceived notions of a person coming from California coming to the South. Yes. You know, would I be welcomed? What are, how are people treated in a community? Right. And all of these things. And then I went to an interview with this large multi-specialty group 
and a black man is sitting at the head of the table. How about uh, that? How about that? Right. And so my first thought was, not everything I think is true, right? Exactly. Uh, exactly. And and then and then Howard, I brought my father into the interview with me. Okay. Uh, and Howard said, you know, Doctor List, before we start, I want to tell you that when I was uh, looking for a job. I brought my father to my interviews with me. And the fact that you have this connection with your father says a lot about you. And I thought, oh my gosh, he's got me at the word go, right? All right, uh, yes. And so for, I was going through the motions until three minutes into the interview, and Howard Willis changed all that. And, uh, and Howard Willis is a large reason why I'm here. Well, and it's really uh, been life-changing, not just for our community, but for the world. Yeah. Uh, you just traveled to where did you go? I was, I was in the Amsterdam, Netherlands. I was lecturing to the International Alzheimer's Association community. Uh, 7,000 people attended. 7,000? Yeah, 7,000 people attended. It's a, it's a major conference. And, and so I have the, the good luxury uh, to lecture around the world. Uh, so I've lectured Spain and the United uh, uh, Arab Emirates and, of course, uh, the oh Netherlands. My. And, and And locally, I've been, been to most of the states lecturing. I actually just came back this weekend. I was teaching uh, neurologists how to lecture on the new drug. I was in Chicago, so I was trying to train them on understanding this drug better so that they can reach into their communities and make their communities healthier. Wow, so I'm trying to understand why Cole and I were not in Dubai and all of those places. <laughs> <laughs> you know, since, since we're the team, we should be the advance party like they have in the military. We need to go ahead of you next time to make sure everything there, is safe there's and a in very, place. There's a very clear answer to that, and I'll go back to what I said before. Look. I'm just not that smart. <laughs> I should have done that. I should have right, sent you. Right. We, 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 it was a great lecture. We had a good time, but it would have been even better had you been there. Exactly. As the and see, we could have yeah. best been there to make sure no, that everything it, it was going, have, it been going just the way it should. Well, what we're going to do now is go to our first break to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. All right. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. Straightforward is brought to you by State Senator Ed Harbison, serving the citizens of Georgia's 15th Senatorial District and on the front lines for veterans every day. Progressive Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today. In the compassionate and professional services provided, a touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road, trusted by generations. Whole Patient Healthcare, Dr. Jada Rhymes Bacote is board certified in family medicine. She believes the best patient care includes practical, individualized lifestyle changes. Located at 1338 13th Avenue, Columbus, 706-641-2080 or visit wholepatienthealthcare.com. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm continuing this very important conversation with my awesome friend, Dr. Liss, who is here in Columbus. We are better than blessed to have him, a world-respected neurologist who developed the memory number, and we have bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, I love to brag on my friends. My head's going to swell. No, though. really. I mean, you know, even, you know, uh, Dr. Crocker. I mean, it's just you bring so much. Well, you're kind. And, you're kind the, and, the, and the quality of life and understanding and knowledge that's what this is about for me. I want the community to be educated. I want us to know what we need to do to take better care of our own brain health. And then our loved ones. We shouldn't always have to wait till we're in a crisis. Yes. That's we need to be proactive. And that's what I tell people with every situation. Don't wait until you, you're so stressed you can't think. So... Right. The time to act is now. I, I think... Exactly. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's interesting. I'm glad you brought up that point. Because when I was lecturing in Amsterdam a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. I said uh, to them what I'm going to say to you, right. uh, is that although we've had a major breakthrough in the treatment of early Alzheimer's disease, we have a new drug now on the market mm -hmm. and everybody should be looking for it, uh, that this disease, Alzheimer's disease, was always treatable. It's just becoming hmm. more treatable. And what I mean by that is that it's not just about medications. Okay. So there are things to do to prevent the disease, leading a little healthier lifestyle. And I don't mean you have to be, you know, a crazy athlete, right? Right. I just mean being a little healthier than you were before. Right. You're reduce... not saying we got to run five miles every not day. Even not, okay. not even remotely. Not even remotely. Okay. So just eating a little healthier, um, drinking a little less alcohol, okay. not smoking, taking care of your diabetes, taking care of your hypertension, taking care of your cholesterol. 
These kinds of things make a huge difference in brain health. Uh -huh. So that's one thing that is treatable. This is a way we can go after this disease. Uh -huh. The second thing is to fix all the things that are fixable. Because if you're distracted from depression and from anxiety, or uh -huh. poor sleep, hip pain, medications, you choose it. All of those things are fixable. Hearing and eyesight, fixable. So fixing all those things. I have a little booklet that everybody's welcome to get. It's free on our website, and we hand it out in our office all the time. Right. And you'll see in this little booklet a lemon tree, and it reminds me to make lemonade out of lemons. All right. right? I like so that. So if you can't hear, let's figure out how we can make you hear better, uh -huh. right? So, so these are the kind of things that can really make a difference in brain health and in quality of life and in leadership in a family and in a community. Uh -huh. And then the next thing that we talk about all the time is the giant advancement we've had in electronics. Uh, and so the time to incorporate electronics in your life for your independence is not when you need them. Right. It's when you can learn them easily. Exactly. And so we're constantly talking about the voice reminders of things like Siri and Alexa to remind us to turn off a burner or lock a door or to take our medicines at 8 o'clock. These things are so easy to do now. Uh, and we've got these things called Fitbits and Apple Watches and other things that will measure our walking, do a little bit of measurement of our sleep. But now, most importantly for me in my profession, is that I have so many families uh -huh. that they, they, they call their mom at night, and then when they call in the morning, they're just praying that their mom answers the phone. Exactly. Right? right. But now with these, all these devices, they have things called accelerometers in them. If these devices hit the floor, meaning that mom has hit the floor, right. an emergency message is automatically sent. They don't, the mom doesn't even have to be awake to do it. So when a daughter now calls, if mom is wearing these kinds of things, mm -hmm. they don't have to have a hope and a prayer that she answers in the morning. They know she's going to answer in the morning. Right. Now, so. what I like what you just said, we need to fix the things that are fixable. And we don't need to wait until we're at a 911. That's right. If we see that our loved ones are slowing down, if they live independently, then now is the time to teach them how to use Alexa and all of that, That's right. which is going to help their quality of life, whether they have Alzheimer's or not, when we see the aging process, that's a good time to do it versus trying to what? Yeah. Teach someone once they've been diagnosed. Yeah, that's, and I, I just want to, to trail on what you just said. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a bad leg, the bad leg could be from arthritis or vascular disease or a car accident or a right. wound. But the solutions are the same, a cane, a walker, a brace, right. these kinds of things. So when people are not functioning quite as well as you want them to, from aging, from disease, from right. whatever it may be, mm -hmm. the solutions are very similar. Right. And so people need to grab onto those things. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say we have to support the caregiver. Ooh. That is sometimes the 80-year-old spouse. That is yes. sometimes the 40-year-old daughter or son. Yes. But we have to support them. Because if we don't support them, they can't be the kind of person that, that he or she wants to be uh -huh. in their family. Uh -huh. And so it's very important as a, as a physician that I tell usually the daughter that it's important for you, Mrs. Jones, to take a half day off a couple of times a week for just personal fun. And that doesn't mean a medical appointment. That right. means having joy while your loved one is well cared for, giving permission. And as a family member, you shouldn't be, or a churchgoer, right. you shouldn't be saying, if there's anything you need, please let me know. You right. should be stepping into the fray and saying, this is what I would like to do for you. Right. Uh, and that way it takes the burden off the shoulders. It doesn't make a person feel weak that they've accepted help, that you as a friendly and loving person has said, I'm going to do this for you. You know, sort of dare me not to. Exactly. Be assertive. Be assertive. Because people will often say, well, let me know if you need exactly. something. And then it kind of makes you feel like, well, you know. Yeah. And the you call see, will never come. Right. And it's like, you see, I'm here. I'm struggling. Yeah. So just say. Just say or do. Say, bring say or bring do. Bring over some groceries. Bring over a, a meal. Uh, you know, take, offer to take the loved one to the doctor's appointment. There's a thousand things that can be done that can give the caregiver a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we create a much better environment for everybody in that household. Mm -hmm. Because oft, often the caregiver is forgotten. Yes. And it's, it just turns into a routine. It is. And you're just running yeah. on adrenaline, yeah. trying to get things done. And that person could actually be better, like you said, at one of our community events. If they just had an hour to just sit in the park, just listen to music, be quiet. That's exactly right. You know, it doesn't have to be that you sent them to the Bahamas for three That's days. That's exactly right. Right. And those some are Some personal things. time, but not personal time to clean the house or get some groceries. Right. Personal time to have joy, listen to music, take right. a walk, be with a friend. Right. Those kinds of things. And, and the caregiver is often forgotten, but I want to be clear, at the Columbus Memory Center, the caregiver is never forgotten. They are part of the center of the universe. Okay. Because the best way for me to get Mr. Jones to live to be 100 is for Mrs. Jones to be 100. See, and I like that. So you're paying attention not just to 
the patient, but the caregiver. Have to. And it, it, so it's the whole family. It is. You're this is a holistic the whole, way in which to look at it. Right. And the journey is, is not always an easy journey, right. and every family's journey is different. That's, it is. All of that is true, but I think that we can help make the journey easier uh -huh. by giving some of this advice about electronics, about appropriate medications, about removing inappropriate medications, right. about trying to connect in the resources in the community uh -huh. that can be helpful. Okay, that sounds good. Well, what we're going to do now, go to our break to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. All right. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. The Miley Agency, 4903 Armour Road. Gerald L. Miley and William Rip Singer have been providing comprehensive reviews and insuring families in Georgia and Alabama for more than 50 years. The Miley Agency will work nonstop to find you the best policy at the best price. You can rest assured that your information is secure, confidential, and protected. Call today at 706-996-2045. Adjuster Source 101. Sign up today for the Insurance Claims Adjuster Virtual Course. The All Lines license allows an adjuster to work claims in residential, commercial, inland marine, ocean marine, and workers' comp, Georgia property and casualty, Alabama property and casualty, and additional states. For more information, call 470 724 1050 or info at adjustersource101.com. The Columbus Memory Center, 7196 North Lake Drive, Suite A, Columbus. Dr. Jonathan Liss is a board-certified neurologist and sleep specialist committed to battling Alzheimer's by preserving independence, offering you the opportunity to get your memory number for free, the only vital sign for brain health. Call today at 706-327-4000 or visit columbusmemorycenter.com. And welcome back to Straightforward. I'm continuing this wonderful conversation with the world-renowned <laughs> Dr. Jonathan Liss. I tell you, we have to brag about you. You, are you want to brag about everybody, but I have to brag about you, you because you work, very, you work very hard and you walk very humbly in your gift. And we were just at a community event. People were excited to see you. We were at CSU. I was excited. And folks really, that made a difference because what that says to people, you're approachable and they can trust what you're saying. Well, I very much appreciate that. I, and that's I, important. Well, you know what I, it is. And, and if I've achieved that, that makes me feel fantastic because that is my life mission. It mm -hmm. really is. So, th so thank you for saying that. Yeah. So we have to be able to trust that's where I'm going with this, yeah. because you know historically we have what the Tuskegee experiments right. and things like that, and a lot of your work we really need to get all members of a community involved so that the research will reflect. That's right. And you'll I, know how to treat people. That's exactly right. But if we keep having the old memory of Tuskegee in the back of our mind, it's important to have someone you respect and you feel that they're approachable. So you've done all of that. Well, you know what, I, I take a lot of pride in that, so thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, Columbus, because of the community, is one of the world leaders in diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are able to gain the trust of minority communities better than most other communities. Mm -hmm. But we still have to work hard. We have to work hard because, you know, I, being a white male, mm -hmm. I have been the problem over the last 200 years, right? Right, in terms uh, of building the trust. Yeah, well, I've been mm -hmm. the problems in destroying the trust, right, right for, for right. 200 years, mm -hmm. right? So I'm trying to reverse it. I'm trying to gain the trust. Right. And we talk about Tuskegee a fair bit here, and we talk about Henry de Lax, and we talk mm -hmm. about many other injustices, because I want people to understand, first of all, we would never let that happen here. Mm -hmm. uh, and second of all, many, many safeguards have been brought in to make certain somebody like me cannot victimize somebody like you ever again. Exactly. And so that's really important. But I also wanted to key in on what you said. If we do not have people of every community involved in our research, mm -hmm. then people of every community are not involved in the results of that research. That's it. That's and so, important. So we want people to know that if a new drug comes to market, like this one that just came called Lakembi, mm -hmm. we want people to know that if it's deemed successful, that it's deemed successful for everybody. Exactly. Um, and so we've had a, a, a fair bit of success in research. We're one of the world's leaders in Alzheimer's research, and we have research trials that prevent the, trying to prevent the disease. We have research trials for medications at every stage of the disease, mm -hmm. and we are we were number three in the entire world for enrollment for this drug called Lakembi. We, in other words, attracted more people than most everybody else in the world really? to participate in this. And it turns out the drug works. 
It substantially slows down early disease, and we are, it's now on the market for people to take advantage of, and we're working with many other drugs that we hope to bring to market to mm -hmm. make a huge difference in this disease. So what's the big difference between, and I know you shared this at a community event, the drugs we had before, yeah. it was better than not having anything, right. but this drug is almost like the Bentley. Yeah, you know what, I want, I'm going to take it down from the Bentley estate because I want to do better and better. I don't want to get okay. to the top. I want All right. to, so a so Cadillac we'll, we'll or something. So we'll be a Cadillac. Yeah, yeah okay. something like that. Okay. But so um, the, the drugs that we had on the market, first of all, had not changed in about 20 years. Really? That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. and we hadn't made any new, new, new steps. And they very modestly slow down the disease, mm -hmm. okay, by giving back a chemical or inhibiting a chemical that we didn't want. These newer drugs are actually removing the protein from the brain that cause Alzheimer's disease. So they're changing the entire physiology of the brain. And when we take this protein out, we see that there are signs, what we'd say downstream signs, things that were going to happen later are less likely to happen as fulminantly because we've taken the protein out. Okay. So this is, we, we've had this theory for about 20 years. It's called mm -hmm. the amyloid hypothesis. And now we've proven that it's true. Okay, and now tell me what that hypothesis is again. So the, the, in order to have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, okay. a person has to have a protein in the brain called beta amyloid. We don't want beta amyloid. We don't. We don't. Okay. And this drug takes it out of the brain, for the most part, very safely. Okay. okay? And we now know that by doing so, we can actually slow down the disease, maintain a person's intellect for far longer than mm -hmm. if they weren't on the, on the drug. Okay. And what this has done now is revolutionized our ability to, to go after this disease. So we are now looking at many, many different ways in which to stop this disease or slow it down. Mm -hmm. In the old days, the whole world had to look like a nail because all we had was a hammer. Exactly. Okay? Now we have an entire toolbox of things that we can use in our research trying to slow down the disease. And, and of, of modern day, this drug that was just approved a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. is the first giant step forward, but there's going to be many more giant steps forward coming, and Columbus is leading the way. Okay, so is this just for the people that's newly diagnosed, or can someone that's in the middle of the journey, because we know if you're at the end, then we, you know it's nothing right. we can do to walk that back. So this so, particular drug mm -hmm. is only at the very early part. That's why we need people to get the memory number, because right. if they have a problem, we want to detect it before it's too late to get this drug. Right. But I even want to take a step before that, because the same drug is being used in our prevention research. Mm -hmm. And we are desperate for the minority community to come in and be part of our prevention research. Okay. They'll be treated with dignity and respect. There is no cost to it. In fact, they'll be paid a small amount of money to participate in the research and they can always walk away from the research if they don't like it. There's no obligation. But if they want to come in and talk with me, we'll sit down and have a conference. Uh, and we, we need people of various backgrounds to be in this research mm -hmm. because since this drug now slows down the disease, mm -hmm. we have every reason to believe it's going to make a substantial difference in preventing the disease. And at the end of the day, if we don't have every community involved, every community is not going to be involved in the, in the results. Right. And then historically, African Americans, we've been a ver at a very low percentage. Very low percentage. And, and, and by the way, unfortunately, African Americans are two to three times more likely to get the disease than non-African Americans. So we need, they, they frankly need us, we need them, right? Exactly. Um, and, and so we have to be able to, the only way we can de defeat this disease is to help the African American community defeat this disease. And that is just a giant goal of mine. Okay. Well, all of that's very important, and because I really want you to elaborate more on how people can be a part of the research, uh, what the pluses and the minuses are, uh, there is a small stipend or something that's for right. people that yeah. do participate, I want to stop the interview right here okay. and let us do a part two. Because okay. I think this is very important, and we need people to be informed. We need people to be engaged. We do. So that we can make a difference in the African-American community, because I know many families, including my own, has been touched by this disease. Yes. Let's make this a cliffhanger. Then everybody will get to season two. Exactly. All right. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to end right here, and then we'll come back for part two. That's wonderful. Right. Thank you, Gloria. This has been straightforward. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Until next time, be blessed. What up, world? What's up, Columbus? Be sure to tune in every Sunday, straight forward with Gloria Strode, right here on NBC 38.